Hello and welcome to HD Movie Talk. I'm your host, Dean, and my other host sitting here with me today in the virtual room is Harlan, also known as Fluffy Duffy. Hello. Hello. That didn't sound like you at all. And for the first time ever, we have a guest joining us. The virtual room is pretty cramped. I'd like to welcome Peyton underscore JB on TikTok. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys? We're, we're all doing, good. Doing just fine. Doing just fine. So, so Harlan, today we are doing the guest's bests. Do you want to explain best. that? Okay, so basically, on this, this in this series, we bring on a guest and they bring their favorite movie. We watch a movie if we haven't seen it, and then we discuss their movie. How yeah, was that? That, that, that was pretty concise. And the movie we are talking about today is The Way, Way Back. You probably saw that in the title. But before we begin, just, just have a quick chat with Peyton, why don't we? We you know, get to know our buddy here. Okay, I, I, have, I got a question for you, Peyton. What's that? Are steelbooks worth it? Well, that depends on how good they look, uh, in my opinion. But most of the time, I'd say, yeah, they're worth it. Um, if, if it's like the initial price of usually like $35, then I'd say maybe wait, unless it's something that you really want and that you're worried is gonna sell out very quickly. Um, I wouldn't buy a steel book on like eBay or something right after they come out because usually people will buy them up when they come out, they'll sell them for like a hundred dollars, but trust me, they're gonna get a price drop later pretty much almost all of the time. See, see how I shop for my Blu-rays is I don't buy, I, I, have, I, have, I have never myself bought a Blu-ray at full price. I always go bargain hunting for Blu-rays. Oh, yeah. So whenever I see like a steelbook price, my heart sinks. They look really yeah. cool. Yeah, I mean, you can even go to like pawn shops or, um, you know, those kind of buy, sell and trade type shops or record mm -hmm. stores that, that sell used movies. And they oftentimes have steel books for much cheaper. Mm. Yeah, I can see I'm in the bottom of the hierarchy here because Peyton here collects steel books, Harlan collects Blu-rays, and me over in poor old England collects DVDs. And that's because <coughs> thanks. That's because I like to get them for 50p and stuff like that, or whatever the equivalent is, 50 cents. Uh I go to a lovely little shop in the UK called CEX, which is all secondhand stuff, and it's a bargain, and I regret nothing. Sorry, I don't know why. It I'm is a bargain. So I mean, yeah, yeah I, there yes. there are always great bargain shops for that. But Blu-ray, 4K, and Steelbooks—that's what I do. I don't um, have a 4K TV, so it's not like I'd be able to even watch it. I, I started Blu collecting a bunch of 4K Blu-rays, and then I was like, maybe I should actually get a 4K player. <laughs> watch yes. these, and so I, I got know. one. Really fun. Good suggestion. I only own, okay, I have like 150 DVDs maybe, and I own only two Blu-rays. Um, I think I've said this to someone before, I don't know if it was on the podcast, but they are Thor The Dark World and Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, and that is the extent of my Blu-ray DVD collection. I don't have Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. I feel like that's one that I like am entitled to have. <laughs> I have I don't it. Have it. <laughs> do you mean you just deserve it for free you just... <laughs> yeah. i feel like if you have a spider-man tattoo you should be given every single spider-man blu-ray i don't have the amazing spider-mans or spider-man homecoming but i have the rest mm. i have every spider-man movie on dvd so i guess who's at the bottom of the thing yeah. now yeah it doesn't count you. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah it doesn't count Okay. Okay. My my next question. Uh, I, I I was trying to think how to word this, and and I think I thought of an. In, I, I we'll see, won't we? So basically, it. What do you think? Like your type in movies? If like someone had to describe to you a movie that would be your perfect movie, what would it be? And not like unrelated from this movie, obviously. Well, I mean, completely unrelated. Do you mean like anything but this type of movie? I, I mean, like, what do you look for in a movie? I'm making it sound like dating. So, like, if you if you were on a dating profile for movies, stick with me here. What would what would your bio say? Okay. Um, 
it would say if you're directed by Michael Bay, don't hit me up. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but um, no, I mean, I like some of this stuff, but uh, I, I'm a huge fan of coming of age. I mean, obviously we got this movie we're talking about today. Um, so coming of age stories are, are big for me, but I also like um, just things that are, are really suspenseful. And I'm a huge fan of Chekhov's gun. And whenever that's in a movie, like, I, I don't know why it always just blows my mind. Um, like, no spoilers, but I just saw A Quiet Place 2, and there's something like that that just excited me a lot. I feel like there are a bunch of things like that in A Quiet Place 2. Yeah. This movie yeah. has Chekhov's water slide. Thank you. We'll yes. get into that later. <laughs> yes, Chekhov's water slide. And um, especially, like, the movie Knives Out. Um, I love a twist as well. So that, that movie, I feel like, was was perfect. I love Knives um, Out. That, that's in my letterbox top four, actually. Yeah, wow, it's it's just incredible. I love the twists. I love the uh, Chekhov's gun stuff, and the characters are fun. It's and it's funny too. Humor is always good. I I really give points to a movie that can make me genuinely laugh really hard because it's kind of surprising how how little that happens. Freaking Ryan Johnson junkies over here. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to mention The Last Jedi because this will go on that, for hours. If that would do. literally be an entire episode. Hey, if you guys do an episode on that, uh, please have me back. Oh, um, no, don't worry. We're, we're planning on one day maybe doing a very big one. And I, I need someone to defend my side. So you'll probably be my choice. Do you have any more questions, Harlan, or shall we move on um, to this movie? Yeah, I got, I got one more question. Um, so I this is a question I find interesting. So obviously a TikTok creator, what was the first video to kind of like hook the algorithm? Okay, so this is a fun story. Um, my very first ever TikTok video period um, was a stitch with, there was this thing going around and, and I'm not gonna get too into it because we're not gonna talk about The Last Jedi, but there was this thing <laughs> going around um, that was like, oh, Mark Hamill is breaking down on the set of The Last Jedi. He's crying because his character got ruined. And it's completely false. I mean, it's it's literally footage from the documentary, The Director and the Jedi. And it's just Mark Hamill giving a good performance. And it's that scene where he's he's on the ground and he's next to R2-D2. Uh, and the temple is, is burning. So it's just it's literally just him doing that scene. And they, they play it off as, oh, Mark Hamill's like breaking down, crying on set. And so I stitched that video, basically debunking it. And overnight, that video got like 1,500 views. And I got a bunch of just nasty comments um, really? from people who, who oh. bought that video. But I got some that were, that were good. And then um, I just kind of kept making videos from there. But the one that really, really hooked the algorithm and, and boosted me in followers, I don't know if... I don't think, I, I know you definitely haven't seen it, Harlan, but Dean, you you may have seen it. I don't think you followed me at the time uh, when these were up because they're no longer up. The sound got taken down. But um, I made a video stitching another person who was asking like, who is the person that builds the cars that are in the Cars movies? <laughs> like who creates them? And I made this whole just chain of events that was just completely satirical. And, and I was like, well... Uh, this scene implies this, and so that means that cars maybe they reproduce naturally. Maybe like, I, and I just kept asking questions, and then I, I needed a way to kind of end it, um, and so I kind of wanted to imply the process was like a never-ending thing, and so I said, and that you know the answer to all this, it's in the Cars video game for the Nintendo Wii, obviously. Um, See, I don't remember this video, but I've definitely seen you make enough videos making this inside joke about the car's Wii, and I'm glad I understand it. Yeah, so it cuts off at the end when I'm like, oh, well, you see in this game, like it just, it was just meant to like imply the process is just never ending and it's going on a tangent, but people really wanted a part two. And so I made a part <laughs> two, three, four, five, all the way through like nine, and people ate it up. And I kept every, at the end of every video, I would bring it back to Car's Wii, and then it would cut at the very end. So it was an <laughs> ongoing awesome. joke, but a lot of people thought that I was seriously hiding something in this game. <laughs> and 
I don't know why. Like I, a lot of people just didn't get that it was a joke, and they were like, "No, you got to tell us what's in cards. We you got to make another video." Okay, to be uh, honest, the reason we brought you onto this podcast is because we we are desperate to know the answer. Is there anything hidden in cards? We. Um, you know, actually, there are customizable vehicles in this, so that there might be like some actual like lore explanation you could draw from that for for how they're made, but. But then, you know, that was never the content that I wanted to be known for. I always wanted to make movie <laughs> stuff. So Don't that one joke video sparked a chain. And I was like, okay, I've gained like 3,000 followers off like these four cars videos. I, I don't know if I... And so I kept making them just because people liked them. But... Mm -hmm. And they were kind of fun. Um, but then eventually it kind of like died out. And then it would like randomly spike again. Like the the first video would like do really well, and I it, it got me up like a lot of followers. Um, and I feel like every time I lose a follower, I'm like, that guy was definitely a Cars fan. <laughs> like because I feel like people I feel like people maybe aren't too into what I'm doing now. But um, yeah, it's fu it's funny you say that because I think. A lot of my followers do know me as the letterboxed guy now, and just right constantly, yeah. I get asked to do another one, and I'm I'm just not going to do one for ages. If it, if I will, it's going to be in a, a long time, and people yeah. just keep bugging me to do one. Well, don't, it's not going to happen. Don't tell again. them that. Don't tell them that. It's, it's coming. It's coming soon. Yeah, I'll post it. One. No, it's not. Okay. <laughs> Stun follow me. <laughs> like a, a few weeks ago, I actually did get tagged in a video where another dude was was doing some cars debunking. Like someone tagged me in that, and I was like, "No way! Oh wow, you're actually an OG of my page!" Like because he still followed me. I was like, "I appreciate that you actually thought of me watching this video." He was like, "You should bring the the series back," and I was like, "I don't know, man." Because TikTok actually took down two of the cars videos for hate speech and nudity. Um, which I don't understand because they're cars and the cars I are naked. I don't yeah. even show nudity in the video. Or... It, it's funny, yeah. No, it, it, it's funny you say the thing about mentioning as well because Harlan and I do often talk about how, how nice our stitches and duets are, and I think that's what I enjoy most seeing from the fans. Apart from one guy who I'm not going to name, I, I sent his video to Harlan mm. and I might send it to you later, you Peyton. And he just really him. aggressively stitches so many of my videos. <laughs> I should show you guys a an angry stitch I got from one. Yeah, we um, yeah. Let's let's not name names, but I think it's about time we do get into this movie. It's the way way back. It, it's twenty thirteen movie. It's coming of age story, and it stars uh, Steve Carell, Sam Rockwell, and pause for dramatic effect. Not because I forgot his name, Liam James. It was also written and directed by Nat Faxon and Jim Rash. There you go. Quick fact. So thing. Nat Faxon and Jim Rash also play two characters in the movie. They do. Um, I recognized um, Jim Rash because he's from Community, where he plays the Dean. Um, normally that's Oh, no role. way. He I directed that? Busy that day. Yeah. Lewis. Lewis from The Way Way Back. Yeah. He's one of the directors. And then the other one is. Um, the other lifeguard guy. Nat Faxon, he he plays, uh, I believe his name is Roddy in The Way Way Back. Um, yes, Roddy. He's, yeah. Right. I, th I think this is quite an, an like unknown movie. I was going to say indie, but I don't want to sound pretentious. So for our listeners at home, do you want to explain the plot of this movie briefly, Peyton? So the plot of this movie is basically a 14-year-old kid played by Liam James named Duncan. Uh, he is going on to his mom's boyfriend's summer home for the summer and he does not want to go because he doesn't like his mom's boyfriend and he's a very awkward kind of shy kid and basically he befriends uh, a lot of managers at a water park while he's there and they kind of bring him out of his shell that's the basic plot there's a little more going on but in terms of bare bones that's that's the uh, story that's good. And I, I, I'm just going to open this conversation with saying I do really like this movie. I am waiting for the day where one of our guests brings on a movie that I really hate. I don't know what I'm going to do in that episode, but I do really love this movie. I think it's really great. What, what were your thoughts, Harlan? I didn't like seeing Steve Carell as a bad guy. Oh, I'm going to get onto that, but... That really bugged me. 
Clearly, you haven't seen season one of The Office. <laughs> I thought it was cool that that he had a change of pace with that, but yeah, I mean, it, it's a little weird. I mean, obviously, he was good in it. Yeah. Yes, yeah. he was great. But personally, subjectively speaking, <laughs> but Sam Rockwell kind of evens it out. Oh, yeah, Sam Rockwell, one of my favorite yeah. actors. He's just great in everything, including this. He's amazing. This movie also has a very underrated performance from Tony Collette as Duncan's mom. Mm. Um, she is, I mean, Tony Collette is my favorite actress working today, personally. And a lot of people, they talk about her performance in Hereditary. Um, she's great in Knives Out as well. But, and she's fantastic in uh, The Sixth Sense. She's kind of always playing a mom, which is strange. But um, in this movie, I, nobody ever talks about her performance in this movie. She has, like, really great emotional scenes. Um, yeah, you're so right. She's really good. Anytime she got angry, I got I got nervous. Yeah. Because I, I, when I think of Toni Collette, the image that pops in my head is her smashing her head on the attic door. Oh, yeah. That's what I think Hereditary. of instantly. So the first question I was going to ask about this movie is just, just do you want to just tell us about the first time you watched it and whether mm. you liked it then and where it was and whatever? Yeah, absolutely. So this is a great story. Um, my one of my best friends, um, it's his favorite movie as well. So it's kind of like wearing the same shirt to a party. I was a little, I felt a little hesitant to claim this as my favorite movie because I, I didn't want to, you know, steal his favorite movie or anything like that. But it was his favorite movie and he, um, it still is his favorite too. But he showed it to me and I really loved it the first time I saw it, but I didn't like rate it as highly as I do now or um, claim it as like a top four favorite at, the, at that point, just because I didn't quite relate to it as much as I did once life started going on. Um, of course, you know, it's, it's still a very relatable movie. And what's funny is my friend, he's, he's no more, he's no less than like four years older than me. Um, he's got completely different life experiences. And yet we both relate to this movie so strongly and I think that that's something that's really impressive about it is it's got such a wide range of relatability toward so many different people uh, um, I mean we're we're so different in a lot of ways but the fact that we were ba oh, both able to connect with this movie um, I think speaks to just how special it is um, and I like to say it's it's both both everything about it is special and nothing about it because it's really just your generic coming of age story. Yeah. But there are just such subtle parts of it that I think really make it stand above that. And um, we can get into the, some of that stuff later, but um, yeah, my first time watching it uh, wasn't, you know, my favorite movie yet. I was hesitant for a while, but it definitely is the one that, that connects with me the most. So I kind of had to <laughs> be honest with myself. It, it did take me a while to claim Baby Driver as well, I think. And you'll know this. If anyone says Baby Driver is their favorite movie on my page, I block them immediately because it's my favorite. What? Um, Wait, really? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, damn. <laughs> uh, okay. I've gotten a surprising amount of people that they'll see my profile picture is this movie and they'll say, oh, that's my favorite movie too. That's It's surprising how many yeah, people I, there are I out never there. heard of it until I saw your profile picture. Had you heard of it, Harlan? No, I, I mean, I, I, when I saw like what the movie was for today, I'm like, oh, the Ben Affleck movie. But then I, I looked up and I'm like, oh, wait, no, it's the way, way back. Yeah, yeah. And what's, what's funny too is uh, when, my, when my good friend said it was his favorite movie, I looked it up and I watched the trailer and I was like, really? Like, this is his favorite movie? Like, it just seems like a regular like, yeah, I don't think you'd be able to get like this movie in a trailer because from face value, it does seem very generic and samey as a lot of other stuff. But question I've got for both of you, and I, I'm going to have to think of an answer myself. Harlan can go first. What is your favorite part about this movie? I'll start with that one. I think my favorite part about the movie... Um, is the relationship between Sam Rockwell's character and Liam James. 
Lee's character. He's got such a boring name. Sorry, Lee. Yeah, like, names. like pick a last name. <laughs> <laughs> he has two members of BTR in his name. Two members of Big Liam Time Skywalker. Rush. He's going to be Liam Skywalker. I've got two last names as my name, though. I'm Dean Walker. Yeah, come on, dude. You guys need to hook up, and then maybe you guys can figure that one out. <laughs> sure. Okay, so what is your favorite part of your favorite movie? Can, can you choose one that easily? No, I can't choose one super easily. There's a lot of stuff I love about it. But if I did anticipate this question, so I, I, I did kind of narrow it down. My favorite thing about this movie is the relationship between Duncan and his mother. Because I, I'm not going to, you know, obviously get into the nitty gritty, but I really relate to that. It's very similar in a lot of ways to how me and my mother are. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I get that. I think this movie does strive in the relatability. Like I said, my favorite moment is similar to Harlan's, but I'm getting Liam James out of the equation. It's just Sam Rockwell as a whole. I think he's a really great character in this. And I think there is, although it does on face value seem like the funny and quirky character, there is some really strong moments with this character as well. Okay, now for the harder question. I assume it's going to be harder for Peyton. What is your least favorite thing? about this movie is there anything Ooh. that you wouldn't like about it i don't think there's anything i would change about it necessarily um i've spent so much time loving it that i haven't even tried to to pick it apart <laughs> um but i mean if we're just speaking in terms of the movies universe steve carell's character i hate that guy <laughs> but <laughs> but uh in terms of the filmmaking i mean there's there's nothing too much i would change could, can I, you pick something, Harlan? Do you... I think my least favorite part about the movie um, would have to be the uh, romantic interest in the movie because uh. I feel like I feel like the movie could have been the same without it. I kind of get that actually. I yeah. I mean, in in terms of relatability and people, you know, relating to the character, it's important. However, I feel like when it comes down to it, it was really a story about Liam and I mean, I mean, Duncan and his mom and, and, and You're, Sam Rockwell. You make a really good point there because yeah, I mean, you could probably take her out and it wouldn't change too much um, of like the story itself. Um, I did enjoy the, the payoff at the end when he's getting into the car. Like I was like, yes, he's, you know, I just it, it's it's cool to watch him kind of become more feel feel more comfortable in his own skin. Um, that was my favorite, you know. That's one of my favorite things about the movie. So it it helps pay that off. But you're right there. There's not too much to add to like the the plot still works if you just take her out of it. You know, I'm going to mention my favorite movie. Okay. Well, maybe not my favorite movie, but I'm I'm going to diss my favorite movie. Now I'm going to bring up Spider-Man and Mary Which Jane's Spider-Man? character, the first 2002. Okay. Mary Jane's character is is arguably pretty poorly written. And like, I mean, I'm not saying Mary Jane isn't important to the story and for Peter. I'm not saying it's poorly, I don't know what I'm saying. Well, yeah. But, you know, like, it's like, yeah, it's like a weaker part of the movie, but it wouldn't be the same without it. Yeah. If that makes sense. I kind of get that. My my least favorite part of the movie. So this isn't a joke at all. Honestly, I've seen this movie twice now, and both times it just really upsets me that not a single character punches Steve Carell in the face. It really annoys me. <laughs> and there's so many good moments where they could have done it as well. I liked when he when he shoved him though. That was yeah. Satisfying. The shove the shove is good, but not quite there for me. I, I the. The first time I watched it, I did think Sam Rockwell at the end of the movie was just going to punch him in the face. That would have been and, so good, but it would have. It would I don't think sense. that would have fit too well. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 can we just have that scene though, please? <laughs> yeah, I mean that. Hey, man, if there was like a deleted scene on the Blu-ray, I wouldn't mind that. Like a Sam Rockwell scene. punching him. Yeah, end credit scene. <laughs> Sam Rockwell does like a Fast and Furious maneuver, gets in front of the car, parks it, <laughs> hits Steve Carell, and then just leaves. Um, but actually, what Harlan said earlier about, about the love interest, I just want to say one more thing about that. I did like that, that she was there because 
a lot of the characters at the water park are much older than Duncan. And so it was nice to kind of level him with someone he could confide in that was his own age. That's that's one other thing that I would. That's, that that's a good point, actually. I, I think the character did work for that, but I don't think you like I like the character, but I don't think you still had to turn it into a love interest. At the right. End. And what I also like is that all the, the things that he learns and and the way he grows from his time with the water park managers he is able to apply to trying to you know pursue this girl that he likes and i think that that's cool too because he's like repeating the joke that sam rockwell mm -hmm. made about when the water park was built to her and she laughs at it and so it kind of allows him to to really exercise what uh what he's gained there but yeah and i i feel like i feel like something that is extremely extremely overlooked in this movie is that Rowley's in it. That is something I love about it, too. I <laughs> yeah, love those honestly, characters. They're it great. got to the end of the movie, and I was like, is that Rowley? And then I, <laughs> and I looked, and I was like, it's Rowley. <laughs> what, what I found out while watching this movie, which I think is a really interesting fact, is that it's exactly the same water park as in Grown Ups. Is really? it really? Yeah, and it's got the same name. It's both called, what is it, Whiz, Water Whiz? Water, water Whiz. Whiz. That's so dumb. And, uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and it was filmed at the same water park. Dude, is this like, are they in the same universe? That's Ooh. one of my dreams is to go to that water park in person. That would just be like heaven that for me. That would be cool. And then you can go down the slide with another person. And Yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's up to interpretation what happened in the slide. You know, it's like, did, did Sam Rockwell let him pass him? Did he actually do it? Or... Is it just like physically impossible? I mean, who knows? No, I think I think personally, I mean, I, I guess we're getting into spoilers here. We should probably later. explain this part of the movie because I'm sure lots of people listening wouldn't have done it. At the start of the movie, they set up this joke that many years ago on the water slide, somebody managed to get in front of somebody else while going down it. And it, it's a joke. It, it probably didn't actually happen. And then at the end of the movie, Duncan, the main character, does this same thing to Sam Rockwell's character and gets in front of him in the slide and this is like the big triumphant moment of the movie as I was saying Chekhov's water slide I the way I interpreted it is that Sam that what is his name Owen like pushed like got him in front of him I think that's what happened I think there's a secret chamber within the water slide and Sam Rockwell went down it, went into the secret chamber and then Duncan went over it and then he came out and then they went down the water slide together. Yeah, that's pretty plausible. Yeah, I take away my theory. I think it's, I think it's that one. I withdraw my, my quote. So, so what moments of this movie stands out to you, Harlan? What, what should we start talking about? Well, I think that I think the things that stood out the most for me personally, because I was looking for these, I guess, because I like Sam Rockwell and I like Steve Carell. So I the things when I think back with this movie that stick out to me the most are their performances. Yeah, I get that. I get that. I think I think Steve Carell does a really good job in this movie, and I really hate him. Just just there's the, there's the opening scene when. He asks uh, Duncan what to rate him on a scale of one to ten, what he would rate himself. And Steve Carell rated him a three. And when I first watched this movie, I was expecting him to go, oh, I rate you a three because you don't believe in yourself enough or something like that. But no, this guy is just the worst. Oh, he's terrible. I mean, the whole thing, like, it's, there's a lot of analogies with, like, the Pac-Man thing and the Candyland thing. And when Trent's playing Candyland, he's trying to like bend the rules. And it's basically like he cheats, literally. Um, he cheats in life and he tries to put other people down just to bring himself up, you know? And yeah, I, I didn't even notice that's a very good um, parallel, I think. Right. No, the Candyland scene I always thought was great. Um, it's like, it really shows just how. Uh, bad the state of the the little like i guess you could call it their family is um and, and i moment. think that is a very relatable scene because n i don't think there's a single person on this planet that's played a board game without argument yeah like arguing over the rules and stuff oh. and mine is settlers of Catan. 
I've had yeah. many arguments with my family over that stupid game. <laughs> I think the classic one is Monopoly. I think people always say you can't mm. finish a game of Monopoly without arguing. Yeah, that that one. Me and my sister argue about that all the time. We play Monopoly, yeah. so that's like that's something everyone's been through. Something that's super overlooked in the movie is a scene where Tony Collette's character is doing the dishes, and I think it's right after that Candyland scene, um, mm. if I remember correctly. But she's doing the dishes, and um, Duncan and his stepsister are like in the background, and then they slowly, as the scene goes on, like nobody's talking. They're all just like really upset and they slowly start to kind of take the dishes from her and start doing them for her. It's just, it's this nice, nice loving moment of like, it's okay, like take a load off, you know? It's, I just love that because she's been so stressed out with what's going on with Steve Carell. And... Steve Carell is obviously great and he's, he does well in this. He's like up there with Sam Rockwell for me, but Sam Rockwell's better, let's be honest. And yes. like, Please, can he come back into the MCU? But that's a different conversation. <laughs> he says bird like 83 times. Yeah, okay. What what other things are worth a mention about this movie, you know? Um, there must be a lot. This is... it's uh, This is kind of spoilers, but the, the ending scene, it's one of my favorite movie endings mm. ever. We, we just, have basically already started spoiling it already, so just... just right, don't. yeah. But, uh... No, the ending is so good. Um, it's there's obviously like no dialogue. It's it's kind of speaks volumes without words. But the, what's great about it is, I just love that at the end of the movie, you're really disappointed that she hasn't like broken things off completely with Steve Carell. She like because Duncan was so mad. He's like, we're going home with them. Like, are you serious? After everything that went down, and she's like, look, things, you know. I'm scared and I just want to go with what, whatever's easiest, right? And I, I love that scene between the two of them. And then they get in the car and you're just super disappointed that, and everyone's like completely like staring blank face. They're not smiling at all in the car, right? And then when she climbed into the back seat and the music swells up, it gets, it just gets me excited every time. It's just, I don't know how to really properly articulate it into words, but I just no, love I the idea. Go that the parent realizes that the kid is right at the end of mm -hmm. the movie. Yeah. It's just that last second thing that I, I think we needed because I was like, I would have been really disappointed if it just ended like that. <laughs> yeah, no, it was definitely a nice little, uh, nice little bow. Yeah. On the story. So you mentioned that, did, you, did your friend introduce you to this movie? Yes. How did your friend introduce you to these movies? Like, yo, check out my favorite movie. And you watch it and you're like, well, I, I asked him what his favorite movie was and he said the way way back and I'd never heard of it. And I watched the trailer and I was like, really? Mm -hmm. And then um, we watched it together. He was like, okay. He was like, I was like, yeah, I'd like to, to watch it. And he was like, yeah, I'll watch it with you. So we watched it. Um, and there is the comedy in this movie is so underrated. We were laughing like the entire time. Even it's a really, really funny scene. movie. Uh, something I wanted to say, which I do really like about this movie is the soundtrack. That's another thing I, I do want to bring up too. It's so underrated. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, the, the soundtrack isn't up there or something like this movie behind right. me, which which is Baby Driver for everyone listening. But you know, I'm not gonna throw shade on my friend's favorite movie here. You know, that's not what I'm here to do. No, the soundtrack is very good. I think um, it's good. It's understated. I think which works well, unlike Baby Driver, where it is very. Uh, yeah, Baby Driver was top. like built around the songs. Yeah, it's built. So. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I love the the scene where they're all dancing to to the song Recess. By the way, side note: this is um, my favorite movie. Be also, because it is the only movie I've ever seen where one of the directors of the movie is dancing in the middle of a bunch of people, and then passes off to the other director of the movie, and then that director starts dancing. <laughs> so <laughs> that's uh, that's something you don't see every day. Uh, a little fun fact. Oh, Harlan's getting excited. Someone mentioned I'm fun facts. Like, like a fun fact? <laughs> fun facts? <laughs> Harlan's next video tomorrow. Here are some fun facts about the way, way back. And here's a recording of this. So I don't have to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good stuff. Yeah. I don't think we're talking about Lewis enough. I yes. I... <laughs> yes. I want to talk about Lewis. Go, go ahead. <laughs> I think maybe, just maybe, 
Uh, well, no. I was going to say he's funnier than Sam Rockwell's character, but I don't think so. He's hilarious. He's, I think he's the second funniest character in the movie. Yeah. yeah. I can I can approve of that. Yeah. <laughs> I can agree with that. Um, I also like that he he's constantly talking about leaving, but then he never does. Um, and they throw this whole goodbye party for him because they think he's serious. And then, of course, at the end, you realize he doesn't leave anyway. Um, it's a good camera pan in that moment. I right, think, yeah, where he's on the side. By, and then there's just a slow pan and you're like, oh, what's going to be there? Yeah, I'm still here. Bye. <laughs> I love that whole scene just because every single, or at least except for Roddy, I guess, you don't really explore him too much. But um, Caitlin and Owen, Sam Rockwell's character, um, I really like their relationship. Their chemistry is really good. Um, and Lewis, like all of them kind of have sort of a regret of like just staying at a water park the whole time. And I think that's why Owen, you can tell he's masking something a little bit with how funny he is with his comedy. Um, and when in those serious moments, you know, he's like, there's a whole world out there for you, Duncan, you know, don't settle. I think he might have a regret about settling. Um, and Caitlin says to him like, oh, this was just supposed to be a, a summer job. Like, I hope I don't regret that, that this was just meant to be a summer job. Um, and it's, he, he basically encourages Duncan not to stay at the water park. He's like, I know that this seems like really fun, um, but you, you need to, you, there are bigger things and I know that you're bigger than, than this water park. And so I think that he was really speaking from experience there. So I think there's some, there's some depth to his character. I think, I think that, that there's some depth to 95% of the characters in this movie, I'd say ranging from some depth to a lot very few flat characters i think the only one might be roddy but i don't think that it's a it's a complaint as as say because it's not like it's a bad character it's still funny no 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 flat character doesn't mean a bad character yeah yeah sometimes you need just like a regular comic relief character um and i think he's effective at that but a lot of the characters do have more going on yeah so speaking of characters that we've got going on, I thought what we haven't mentioned yet, which I think is an interesting part of this movie to me, is uh, their next door neighbor. Oh, you mean um, Alison Hannigan, right? Yes, yes. She never plays a nice person. She was very funny, I thought. Um, yeah. But the way she treats her son was kind of messed up. Um, <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> yeah, it was hilarious when, he, when she's like, point with your finger look at the bird <laughs> and then yeah. i think it's a really sweet moment so this kid has a uh what would you call it a, a lazy, lazy eye. eye a lazy eye thank you and and his mother just constantly makes fun of him for it really and makes him wear an eye patch and then finally near the end of the movie he meets sam rockwell's character and sam rockwell is like wow that is really cool i wish i had that and then he just doesn't seem bothered by it at all and then when he comes back home he he's very confrontational to his mother because clearly he's over her when she <laughs> says i've been looking for you all night and he says not now woman like that was <laughs> hysterical um allison J- she was in a different movie i had just watched um bad education, bad education. i watched that last Did you, night what did you think about bad Edu- oh, i thought it was good yeah it was you good it was good anyways yeah. i saw i was excited to see her in something else yeah she's, she's never a there. good person i've seen her in a few things so she never plays like a nice person yeah she's in I, Tonya as well. Yes, she's, she's, she's not a good person. Did she that. win the Oscar? Or was she just nominated for that? I don't know. I know. don't know. Because she was nominated for Best Supporting Actress, and I thought she definitely deserved it because she is very good in that movie, I think. And also, that's just her playing another bad mum. She seems to... And she plays a bad mum in Bad Education as well. Is this her forte? Apparently. She did win the Oscar for... Um, 2018 best performance by an actress in a supporting role for I, Tonya. Wow, good for her. This is off topic, but I'm sure the apart from the letterbox thing, the other thing on TikTok that I think I maybe not as much now was known for is my DCEU slate. And mm. in that, I cast Sam Rockwell as the Joker because I think that man can do anything. Wow, really? Sam Rockwell is a Joker? I feel like if I had a fan casting, yeah, I think Willem Dafoe could do really well as the Joker. He's a little old. 
I was thinking Willem Dafoe, but I just didn't go for him because I thought there'd be it's a bit of a weird age gap between then Harley Quinn and um well hold up. If we're taking that relationship, we're like, oh, it's weird because they're old. <laughs> <laughs> Point taken. Point taken. Well, yeah, I think Willem Dafoe would be good. How old is that guy? He seems very old to me. No offense, yeah, Willem Dafoe. Honest. I know you're listening. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Willem Dafoe is like the biggest us. fan. Yeah. He he keeps asking to be a guest, and we're like, Willem, yeah. come on. We're man. like, Willie, you got to stop, man. <laughs> we don't want to talk about your favorite movie, Aquaman, okay? Yeah, Aquaman. <laughs> <laughs> The moment I really fell in love with the humor in the movie was was the I need a hero joke. Dude, I was so proud of myself for getting that. I was like, I know, I, I get it. And then like he's Captain like, America. the rest of you, you're all dead to me. <laughs> that was a fantastic <laughs> part. Just that whole sequence when they're stuck in the water slide was was really great. Yeah, I, I, I think that my favorite comedy moment near the start was when he went, oh, you're, you're going to have to leave. Um, people are complaining that you look like you're having too much fun. Yeah. And then Duncan just completely not getting it. It's a mo- moment I really appreciated. I think that's the moment that Sam Rockwell was like, I got to I gotta teach this kid a thing or two. And he just totally did, didn't get the joke and he was going to leave. He's like, what? Okay. <laughs> are you kidding <laughs> I, I also love that subtle moment at the end when uh, Steve Carell's like, all right, let's go. And Sam Rockwell like kind of steps in, in between mm. them. Yeah, that warmed my heart. That was very nice. Yeah, and then he goes, oh, I'm a good friend of the three. I'm like, yes, Sam Rockwell. Come on. <laughs> God, punch him in the face. Oh, do not. Oh, really annoys me, this character. And I think that's a big strength of this movie when I feel so strongly about a, a, yeah. about a character. Just really just the worst okay. it was like yeah. about halfway through the movie because like the first half i was like rooting for like a redemption for steve Krell's character yeah i thought i'm like maybe maybe that's the way it's gonna go and it's you know, and then by the halfway point i'm like no this is what this point is not what point story. was it that changed your mind on that what point did he do something you know like no no forgiveness um well i mean i'm trying i'm looking at every single thing he did where i'm like there's no way <laughs> is it, um, is it I, the... I think i think it's when after the whole boat thing um trent made him bring the cooler back and come back and grab yeah. the cooler the life jacket thing really annoys me as well in that scene and the cooler is a good point as well when he goes oh carry the cooler i'm like oh shut up steve okay and everything is so like you can tell that a lot of his kind of passive aggressiveness or his you're I think you're a three like I mean even Sam Rockwell says that's all about him it's it's all projection um, mm-hmm. yeah and the car salesman a lot of what this movie is about is really just rising above people who want to bring you down to make themselves look better like it's I mean that's yeah. a real thing anybody can relate to that I feel I've been doing a, a, a quite a bit of reading about this movie today, and something I found very interesting was Jim Rash, who is who is Dean. He's the Dean. I'm Dean in um, Dean. Community. Um, he said that the three conversation was inspired by an, an actual conversation he had with his stepdad, which also really angers me. That's mm. funny because I would actually I have a, a person that that would probably say that to me. Um, and that's why I related to this movie more over time because yeah. the it's the whole situation between Duncan and his mom and, and Trent. Literally, it's like it's like the writers of this movie started writing my life after I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, so many things about it are so relatable in so many different ways. Like you were saying earlier on, I think every the, I don't think there's a single person who can watch this movie and not find like one thing about it relatable because mm-hmm. it just all of the conversations with different family members and neighbors and stuff like that just yeah yeah you you know at least one person like this person um another thing i wanted to bring up that that i found relatable was uh i around after i saw this movie and this was another reason it started to grow on me more is that i started working at a movie theater that was uh, my first job and because I love movies, I was like, I, I got to work at a movie theater. So I started working at a movie theater and I made a lot of friends there that were very similar to 
the friends that Duncan makes in this movie. They're older than me and they, they kind of like acted the same sometimes. Um, and so that, and, and that I was a really awkward and, and shyer person back then. Um, but I kind of started to, to grow into my own skin better working there. So it like totally resonated with me watching the movie after that. Did you enjoy working at a movie theater? I did. Um, I enjoyed it a lot. I liked getting the posters. Um, mm. This Knives Out poster right there, if you can see, Ooh. that was from the movie theater. So that was a plus. Um, free movies, also a plus. This baby so, driver poster is actually from a cinema as well. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, fun fact. Mine was just, I bought this one online. But I, yeah, I loved working at a movie theater. It's, I think it's one of the better jobs you can have as long as it's got the right, like, management and stuff. Interesting. Because, like, well, I mean, from what I've picked up on is, I, I mean, there's a the movie theater I go to. A lot of my friends have worked there. And they've all had nothing to say but negative things. It might be a management thing. I think, I think thing. yeah. Um, this is off topic a lot now, but I think any job that you have is all down to the management and. Um, That's true. Right. And like the, and like friends you make and stuff like that. I think. And I mean, the management. There were there were coworkers I had that that really had issue with the management. The management usually um, liked me, but. Which, you know, that's that's kind of bad if they're like picking favorites and then they pick on other people. But it's it doesn't um, matter if you're the favorite, so <laughs> yeah. No, but it was never it was never too bad. And uh, I made like a lot of friends that I still have there. So I think from on a personal level it was good. The the work was not hard and mm. I made a little bit of money. So yeah. Yeah. Nothing too bad to complain about, but I can see why other people wouldn't enjoy it because there are a lot of annoying people that go to movies and like oh, yeah, people who make a mess, people who talk, and you have to like tell them to shut up. People who um... Wait, has everybody here seen A Quiet Place Part Two? Yes. Yes. But when I saw it with my friend at the climax of the movie, the the climax, two kids walked in and just were on their phones talking. Oh, that's no, you don't. I, I don't know what it is about a quiet place. Like it, like attracts. <laughs> it's it's funny you say that. I went to the cinema today actually to watch Nobody because it only came out. Oh, that's in the a UK. great movie. It only came out in the UK today because we're so backwater. Um, I did just like keep. It? I did. It was. It. I didn't love it, but it was good. Yeah. I. I'm not a massive fan of these kind of all actiony movies, but there is some depth there as well. It's not just all actually but anyway the point i was saying in the final scene which is the best scene in the movie pretty cool um some guy literally just answered the phone in the cinema and there was literally only four people in the cinema and just this one guy answered his phone and just started having a conversation and i was so annoyed that's annoying yeah i don't know about you guys i'm not a very religious person but i would say that i would consider the church the the movie theater my church so yes. when somebody disrespects the church, I will exile them from my life. It's definitely like my favorite pay- place. Well, yeah, no, but but pre-COVID, I would go to the cinema, like maybe like forty times a year, a little more, a little less, and just I think every t- single time I'd sit down in the cinema, you just feel your entire body relax. I think. Yeah, it, it's definitely my my happy place. I think I like it too because you feel like, like the outside world doesn't matter for like two yeah. hours. Yeah, yeah, and and, like, and you're like just... you're sharing this experience of all the strangers in the room as well. I think is a an important element. You laugh together, you cry together. I remember when I saw the Last Jedi and the uh, Force projection thing that reveal, people were like gasping. They thought that was really cool. And the light speed ram too. People would gasp at that part too. The the one I always remember. I'm just quickly moving on from the Last Jedi. I can see Harlan getting ready for. No, th- those parts were cool. Were... <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, 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 just... not, I'm not a hater. I'm not a hater. I just like to I'm pretend not... you are for the the, the 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 time I remember everyone cheering in the cinema was uh, Avengers: Infinity War, and specifically yeah, that one too. Spoilers for Infinity War: the bit where the entire crowd went absolutely mental was when Thor arrived in Wakanda people were just cheering and it, it it was an amazing moment because people were like cheering and clapping it was a great i remember movie. people sobbing at the end of that movie yeah i remember hearing like <laughs> that thor bit 
that Thor bit is my absolute favorite scene in the movie. It's, oh, it's so good. I love Infinity War. People, oh, good stuff. It's better than Endgame. It's, it's better, better than Endgame. It's better than Endgame. I'm glad we agree on this. Uh, I, I want to talk about Endgame later, but I'm going to get onto that later, okay? I just want to say what I like about this movie is like kind of what we've been saying all along about how it is a coming of age story, but I think it's a lot more of a subtle one and a quieter one. And I think it's very slow and methodical. And I think that works very well. And it's an easy watch. Like you don't have to like the movies I prefer, like not prefer, but like I like deem as my favorite. You feel emotionally taxed afterwards. Yeah, you know I, I get mean? that. Like, you feel like you're in a Zack Snyder film because you're just so depressed. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I feel like about <laughs> Baby Driver as well because I rewatch Baby Driver a lot and I just, I think it's a fun movie to watch. And there are certain movies which I really love and I don't think they're fun to watch. But I think this movie can definitely fall into the fun category. Mm, yeah, yeah, exactly. And there, yeah, there are movies that I love that I just like won't watch again. Like, uh, we need to talk about Kevin never watching that again. It is the most uncomfortable experience you'll ever have in a movie, um, as far as I've seen. But I, it was very well made and very good. But I do not like watching it. It's not enjoyable. Um, as far as The Way Way Back, though, I did want to touch on the the disco, or not disco, the, the break dancing scene. Yes. Mm. That was such a good scene to me. Like... <laughs> I just I liked kind of Caitlin's like like motherly nature of like well no don't make him do that and Owen's like no it's okay I'm here like I'll step in and I like the uh you've got the shirt they'll listen to you um so to round this out I've got a question for Harlan and I'll answer myself is uh I'm gonna ask this in a very Steve Carell way okay uh okay. just give up give me a ballpark figure say any number to to rate this movie out of 10 Mm, that's a good question. I'm not going to be offended. If you say a three, okay. Um, <laughs> Sam it, Rockwell. It, 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 okay. If you give me a that. three, I, I will. If you say I, a three, Sam Rockwell is coming for you. Okay. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I think I would. I mean, I rated it a four and a half on Letterboxd. Go check out my review. That's DWALK username. Thank you very much. Uh, I ate four and a half. So I think that means I'm going to have to give it a nine out of 10 here because nine. I do really like it. He's going to lowball us and go seven, I think. This is my prediction. I, I think I'll give it a 7.5 out of 10. There's a little bit of, because like, I'm, because for me, per, it's not like a super, it's not a super Harlan-y movie. I can still appreciate it as a good movie, just like The Last Jedi. But. Oh, don't mention it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, that, okay. I swear, when you guys, you guys need to do an episode on that. I, I am. I've, rec- I've. By the time this podcast is out, I'm sure it's also going to be out. But I recorded a YouTube video today just about how much I love the Last Jedi, <laughs> and I'm so looking forward to post it just to upset people. But anyways, seven out of ten. That's my seven point five. Seven, seven point five out of ten. That's my. That's, that's my respectable. Seven. I think that that's like a very like. As a film, that's that's pretty much what it is. It is more of like a seven point five movie. It just depends, I think. It really it really gives it extra points if if you relate to it or if you find it just so comforting. But if it's not like your type of movie, you can maybe just be like, yeah, it was all right. Like, and I think I I don't remember if this was on point or not, but Harlan and I were discussing uh, not that long ago that your favorite movie is always a lot more. Uh, than just about the actual content of the movie i think your favorite movie is always a more like emotional and kind of a gut thing i think a lot of the time it can be hard to explain exactly why this movie is better than whatever else right because honestly i mean if if you asked me is this the best movie you've ever seen absolutely not far from it um is this better than baby driver or like something like citizen kane something someone says is like the best movie ever is it better than the shawshank redemption no it's not anywhere near the filmmaking the filmmaking language is just not there in this movie as much as those movies you can't right it's not like an artistic masterpiece It, it really does depend on the eyes of the beholder for this one um so and that's actually one of the reasons that i like it in general too yeah, nice. Okay, I thought we could round out this podcast with 
answering one of the questions from our inboxes, we can all give it uh, an, an answer. Uh, email us your questions at hdmovietalkpod at gmail.com. I think we'll just go with one question for today. Um, this question is from Zachary Wilkins, and he asked, what is most underrated slash overrated movie? So, Harlan, do you want to kick us off with your most underrated movie? I'm not going to say The Last Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> I was dang you stole my answer <laughs> um I think that's a good question should I go I can go first I've got an underrated movie I want to talk about and it's not The Last Jedi it, it that that is a good answer but I think my answer would have to be Godzilla 2014 um I, I'm I'm a big Godzilla fan and I think people talk about how they don't like this movie a lot, but I'm a big fan of it. I think it's probably my favorite of the series. That's a mine. that's a good movie. I like that one. I, I really, mine. I just think it's the best made, and I think Gareth Edwards is a really good director, and he does such clever things with the camera that I didn't really notice until I watched interviews about. The I movie. need to watch it again. Yeah. So what he said, I'm going to basically explain this now because now I've gone into it. He only puts the camera where a person actually will be. So you don't see so people complain that you barely see Godzilla, but that's because you always see him from the floor or from inside a building or something like that. He only puts cameras where people would be, which I think is very clever. That's yeah, that's extremely clever. I, I really enjoy the scene where they're like falling from the sky. That's that, I mean, that's everyone cool. talks about that, but yeah. it's a great scene. Go on, Harlan. Um, I, I got my movie. Hot Rod. Too late. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hot Rod is... I, Hot Rod, I think it's the funniest movie I've ever seen. And I think it has like a 36% on Rotten Tomatoes. Nobody oh, talks about this movie. Never seen it. It's, Hot Rod. I've heard of it. It's with Andy Samberg. I think it, it fits... I mean, especially when... It's hard when it comes to comedy movies because I think... Especially when it comes to like comedic movies it's extremely subjective you know you could have like the best comedy in the world but you just don't laugh at it yeah so but hot rod like it's like it's like i i laugh at every single joke that's in it it's such a good movie it's so freaking funny i feel like this happens every episode but i just added it to my letterboxd watch list there you go okay what's your answer then peyton okay so for underrated so underrated um could mean like that people think people tend the general consensus is usually that it's like worse than it is or than you think it is but then there's also like overlooked which is often like put in the same category where they're like everyone that's seen it likes it but not a lot of people have seen it so overlooked movies are uh anything by john carney he made sing street begin again and once they're all very good um but underrated I'm going to go with Glass by M. Night Shyamalan. Oh, I actually have I haven't seen. I've seen that one. I think people hate on it a little too much. What do you think, Harlan? Gone? Are you going to hate on it a little too much? I, I hate, I extremely dislike the ending. I did yeah. not like the ending. But That's yeah. what people tend to good. say is that the ending is, is bad. And the ending doesn't bother me too much. It actually makes me want to see more from that universe um i'd have to watch the movie again to kind of re-evaluate my thoughts just because i haven't seen it in so long but i really liked it both times i watched it i've watched it twice and i've really enjoyed it i i think it's really clever in a lot of ways um the ending yeah i mean it's it's very controversial there's some people that like it some people that hate it i thought it was um i thought it ended okay there are parts of it that i don't like um i don't want to get into like spoilers too much but yeah it i thought the movie overall was really really well done so i I think it's like an eight out of ten another answer for me would be tag but let's let's talk about overrated who's got answers for overrated overrated got a i've got a couple that um the one that comes to mind and this is just because i talked i've talked about it most recently is seven from david fincher um the end the last act of that movie incredible it's like some of the best cinema like you'll ever watch but then like the rest of it i found to be just sort of a regular good solid thriller but i think i need to give it another go because someone 
kind of in my comments was like, well, you got to think of more about like this aspect of the movie. And so maybe I'll, I'll look deeper into it, but I think that seven is a little bit overrated and also Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Interesting answer. I kind of, I kind of get that. I'm a big Edgar Wright head here. Um, yeah. And it's my <laughs> least favorite Edgar Bible. Wright. It's my least favorite Edgar Wright movie, but I, I, I would still give it like four stars, I think, because I just love all of them. What you, I, who, who's going first, Harlan, me or you? I'm, I'm looking through my videos right now to find one I think is okay. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> my, um, I have two answers. My first one is probably going to have to be, sorry, sorry to bring up the S word again, Star Wars, Revenge of the Sith. Um, from 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 the guy who's done let many many letterboxed ratings now, that is the Star Wars movie that appears in people's top fours the most often, and I just really don't get it because of, it's good, it's a good movie, and it's definitely the best of the prequels. I don't think that's even up to question. But is it like amazing? No, I I don't think it is. I think it's like seven out of ten, maybe. Maybe, maybe Ant Man. Maybe Ant Man is a little overrated. Wow, you're really I think, okay. I, I mean, the, I, I mean, I hear people talk about how much they like Ant Man, but I've never heard it. I wouldn't call it overrated. I'm not saying it's bad, but I'm saying I like love it on rewatch a couple times. It the plot it tends to drag. I can get you. I can kind of get that. It's, get that's fifty that percent Edgar Wright, so I'm gonna defend it. <laughs> Edgar Wright should have made that. Yes. That would have been, I think, I think that had the potential to be one of the greatest MCU movies, or at least one of the, the best directed. Though there is evidence that kind of the MCU like holds directors back a little bit, just because I really love Ryan Coogler, but he made Black Panther, and I thought Black, by, that's another answer. Black Panther is a little overrated in my opinion. I kind just of because, one, I think. Just because it's a, it's a very good movie, but I think it's more of a personal thing for me because I really love Ryan Coogler's direction. Creed is one of my favorite movies of all time. And so it really felt like his style was absent from that movie. There's like two or three shots where you can tell it's Ryan Coogler and then the rest is just a regular Marvel movie. But for a Marvel movie, it's solid. I don't think it's like some cinematic masterpiece though. I think, I think, like, I, think I think one part of them, like, I'm not, I, I don't know Marvel. I don't know the insides of Marvel, um, but I've seen Creed. And I think maybe maybe a part of it could also be um, time constraints. I think that could be a big thing maybe. when it comes to Black Panther. So you look at the possible. CGI in Black Panther. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's <clears throat> bad. That's another thing I don't like about it. I think that's the, well, um, the well-treaded path of um, dissing the movie. I do think it can be overrated at times, and I think... I think we can say quite unequivocally that Disney definitely can, does have a tendency to hold a lot of directors back, especially Star Wars. But I'm not going to mention Star Wars again. My other overrated movie I was going to mention is Endgame. I think it's it's great, actually. I don't know if I'd call it overrated, but it's not a masterpiece. I had a big amount of recency bias for Endgame, so I really, really liked it when it came out. But now I've grown to realize that Infinity War is better. Oh yeah, same. I I, I loved it when I first saw it, and I think we all did. Let's be real. Yeah, I it think, was so exciting. I think Endgame is overrated for the same reason Glass is underrated, and that's <laughs> because of the third act. Uh, so a TikToker who who I do quite like, they're called. Annie Eileen, so that's Annie dot A I L E E N. That uh, we're we're friends on TikTok. Uh, she made a video the other day, which I think I really agree with, where she said that just because Endgame is a good experience to watch, doesn't mean that it's a great movie. And I think that's so true because I I fell in love with the experience. The experience of watching that movie in the cinema might be definitely like top three best movies i've ever watched in a cinema but that doesn't mean it's a great movie endgame really plays to that martin scorsese quote of uh the roller being, coasters yeah yeah i mean i that's kind of what i wanted from it but it definitely does and i think what you said harlan about the the last act being the special part of it um 
I, I that's another reason I think seven is overrated too. And that's also, I think that's, I really quite like Rogue One, a Star Wars star. I'm mentioning it again. I, oh I really quite God. like oh Rogue God. One, but a lot of people who don't will say, oh, it's just because of that that Darth Vader part at the end that people like it. And I mean, I think there's a lot more to love about Rogue One, but I can understand that mm. perspective. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that does bring us to the end of our discussion here. It Peyton, does. do you want to quickly plug your TikTok and stuff like that? All right. My TikTok is at Peyton, P-E-Y-T-O-N, there's not an A, um, underscore J-B. And yeah, go follow me on TikTok. I do movies and Star Wars, and I collect Blu-ray, 4K, Steelbooks, Criterions, all that stuff. And cards. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and cards. Guys, go follow him, because within the next week, he is going to be finishing the car series and finally tell you what's in the Wii one, okay? Yeah. <laughs> totally. He's like, guys, stop, stop. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, I, if I went on a podcast and they were like, and he's going to do 100 letterbox rates next week, I would leave. I'd be like, no, no, no. Uh, anyway, re- yeah, really great TikTok stuff. His will be in the descriptions along with mine and Harlan. Harlan, do you have any specific you want to plug? I do. I just started a podcast and it's called HD Movie Talk. <laughs> oh, yeah, guys, yeah. be sure to go watch the episode that I was featured on the HD, <laughs> HD Movie <laughs> Talk. It's a really good, trust me, guys, especially if you get... I would say go check out his YouTube channel. He just reached 100 subscribers today. That's oh, pretty cool. Oh, and I would mention go check out uh, Dean's YouTube channel. That's what I forgot. That's what I meant to say. Yeah, and and just go and tell me how much you like the last jedi in that video okay uh or don't say how much you dislike it bully dean okay this gone in a direction i don't appreciate (laughs) okay but but with that said i'm gonna end it here and me and harlan are gonna have a serious conversation about whether we should continue this podcast or not so Uh... (laughs) thank you for listening (laughs) we'll see you next time bye see ya adios